Stayallday.com. Before we start, please like and comment on this video so I can get your feedback. Also, click that subscribe button so you can get all the new content I'm dropping on this channel. And the free book, the mental handbook, physical book, work on your game university, just take care of the shipping and handling, send this right to your doorstep. Let's get started. What's going on, everybody? Dre Baldwin, DreAllDay.com. We're back with the NBA season previews. Number three, the Brooklyn Nets. And that's not number three ranked. That's number three from the bottom, according to their record last year. Maybe they'll be better this year. Hopefully they are. We're talking about the Brooklyn Nets. Now, I don't really, I don't see too much to be excited about when it comes to the Brooklyn Nets. So hopefully you who are watching this, you're not a Brooklyn Nets fan. Shout out to Brooklyn, the borough. I mess with Brooklyn, the borough in New York City. But if you happen to be from Brooklyn and you're a Brooklyn Nets fan, listen, keep the faith, keep being a fan, because a fan sticks through thick and thin. But, I mean, look, the Knicks ain't that much better either. But we're going to talk about the Knicks in a future <laughs> preview. Let's talk about the Brooklyn Nets. In this offseason, what they did, they added a couple of pieces. They added a couple of pieces, a couple of veterans who are solid, respectable veterans. But are these guys who are going to get you into the playoffs or help you win a playoff series? answer is hell to the no these are not those players let's see who they picked up anthony bennett i think he's on the training camp roster anthony bennett was the number one pick in the draft a few years ago by the cleveland cavaliers they traded him and andrew wiggins to get kevin love right he was part of the kevin love trade yeah. and anthony bennett was a complete is it safe to say that anthony bennett was a bust i mean he's only 23 years old so he could still recover and become a solid player in the league is it safe to say that Anthony Bennett's a bust? I want to know. Any Toronto fan, Canada fans, all, the, all my Canadian viewers right now, because I know he's Canadian. What do y'all think? Is Anthony Bennett a bust? You from Canada? I ain't going. I'm from America, so I want to hear what the Canadians say. I want to hear a Canadian tell me if he's a bust or we should hold out and see what he does in Brooklyn this year if he makes the roster, because I think he's a training camp roster guy. On the rest of this team, I know they added uh, Jeremy Lin. Jeremy Lin is 28 years old. Maybe he's coming into his prime now. He got the biggest contract on the team except for the star, Brooke Lopez. So Jeremy Lin is on the team. He's going to, who knows what Jeremy, I mean, we know what Jeremy Lin can do pretty much, don't we? I don't know if he's ever going to recreate the magic he had in that short run he had with the Knicks before Carmelo came back and demanded that Lin Sanity end, which is basically what Carmelo Anthony did, if anybody don't know. But who knows, Jeremy Lin, I mean, what you gonna get out of Jeremy Lin? On a team like this, I think Jeremy Lin gets you maybe 17, 18 points, six to eight assists per game if he ends up being the starting point guard and plays all center, I think all season, I think that's what Jeremy Lin can give you. Jeremy Lin is a solid guy. Are you winning a playoff series with Jeremy Lin as your starting point guard? My, my saying is no. You're not winning a playoff series with Jeremy Lin as your starting point guard. I don't think so. Now, Brooke Lopez. Brooke Lopez is also 28 years old. He should be coming into his his prime right now as a big man. Maybe he's already in his prime as a big man because they age a little bit quicker. Brooke Lopez, maybe even slower. Who knows? What am I? Who knows? Brooke Lopez, what we what do we know? Brooke Lopez is seven feet tall. We do know that. Brooke Lopez is one of the best back to the basket scoring big men in the league. He makes $21 million. He's on a max contract. He's almost been traded a couple times to a couple other teams. Didn't get traded. He's only 28 years old, which means he can't get better. Let's see what Brooke Lopez did last year. He played 34 minutes a game. He shot 51% from the floor. Not bad. He shot a couple threes. Why? I don't know. He only shot five free throws a game. Five and a half free throws. We're going to talk about that in a minute. He averaged 7.8 rebounds a game, which is an improvement for Brooke Lopez. If you ever seen Brooke Lopez's overall career stats, average a block and a half a game. And he put up 20 points per game. So Brooke Lopez, he has some, some skills. We can say that. Brooke Lopez has some skills. Brooke Lopez is the best player on this team. The team is going to have to... It's going to have to revolve around Brooke Lopez. Let's look at Brooke Lopez so over the years. I want to show you all some things. <laughs> I want to talk about some things when it comes to Brooke Lopez. He is the best player on this team. This team is pretty much going to go as far as Brooke Lopez carries them. And let me tell you something, Brooklyn Nets fans, that's not a phrase that you want to hear. <laughs> Unfortunately, shout out to Brooke Lopez. <laughs> it's not personal Brooke Lopez, but if... How far this team goes is determined by how, how far Brooke Lopez carries us. If that's the phrase your team is saying, your team is in trouble. Now, your team ain't going far. It's not because Brooke Lopez don't have games. Averaging 20 points per game in the NBA, you got to have some game. All right, I don't care how garbage your teammates are. You average 20 points per game in the NBA, you got to have game. All right, because somebody's trying to stop you. You still get 20. 7.8 rebounds per game. We'll get to that in a minute. Brooke Lopez is not carrying a team to 
first, I don't think Brooke Lopez even carries the team to the playoffs, period, let alone win a playoff series. They, you're definitely not winning a playoff series if Brooke Lopez is the best player on the team. And I think, looking at this roster, that Brooke Lopez and Jeremy Lin are the two best players on the roster. Brooklyn Nets, good news is y'all going to get to go to the NBA Draft Lottery next year. But wait, no, you're not, because all your draft picks have been traded away by, I believe, Billy King was the general manager working at the behest of the Russian guy. What was the Russian guy who owned the team? Uh, Prokhorov? Prokhorov? I forget. How, I can't remember how to pronounce his name. Does he still own the team? I'm not sure if he even still owns it. Somebody fill me in on that. But it was him who said we're going to win a championship in five years. He was wrong. They, they what do they call it? They mortgaged their entire future, i.e. their draft picks. They mortgaged their entire future trying to pick up these veteran guys. They traded draft picks to get Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett, who were good and effective for all of one season. Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett were effective for all of one season before they both started to get very old and weren't useful anymore. And they gave away draft picks for that. Boston got those draft picks, and I think some other teams got those picks. Brooklyn then traded some also possible future to get Darren Williams out of Utah, who was going to get traded out of Utah, but they gave up a lot to get Darren Williams. Darren Williams was good for how long? How long was Darren Williams good playing for the Nets? How many good years did you get out of Darren Williams playing for Brooklyn? Nets fans, y'all let me know. I actually don't know the answer to this question. I'm not even going to research it because the team's not good enough for me to do that much more research. This is strictly my opinion. <laughs> I think you got maybe one, one and a half good years out of Darren Williams on the Brooklyn Nets. Did he lead the Nets to the playoffs? I mean, they did. They went to the playoffs. There's a difference between a player leading a team to the playoffs and going to the playoffs. Now, the Nets went to the playoffs. <laughs> I wouldn't say anybody led them to the playoffs. No, they went to the playoffs. Darren Williams, Darren Williams used to be I don't know how many of you remember this, but do y'all remember at the time when people were actually debating who's better between Darren Williams and Chris Paul? And there was a strong, a strong sentiment that Darren Williams was actually better than Chris Paul. Do y'all remember that? This, this, this actually happened. This actually existed in, in the universe. This was a real occurrence. You can look it up. You can Google it and find these conversations that people were having. If people were making the case, yo, Darren Williams is better than Chris Paul. Darren Williams was in a system in Utah with a, a veteran Hall of Fame coach in Jerry Sloan. He had great players around him like Mamedo Core, Andre Karolinko, Carlos Boozer. Utah had a good squad, a good system, a good solid franchise. He wanted out of there. He got out of there, went to Brooklyn, which was anything but what he had in Utah, where he had to be the man and carry the team. And frankly, I believe, my opinion, Darren Williams showed that he's not a guy who's going to carry a team to winning a playoff series. I didn't see him as actually... I don't see Darren Williams as a guy who was going to carry a team to even making the playoffs, let alone winning a series. Unfortunately, I've said this about three of you guys, but three of y'all guys, Brooklyn fans, but unfortunately, Darren Williams is not on the Nets no more. But the um, reason I'm bringing up Darren Williams is that is Mikhail Prokhorov, or Prokhorov, forgive me for saying his name incorrectly, he mortgaged the future of your team, Brooklyn fans. The reason y'all are trash now is not because of these players. Y'all are trash now because the future, i.e. the draft picks that would make you guys better, was all teams hoped for to get a good draft pick. Every player in the league, a lot of them came through the draft. They were all available in the draft. That's what replenishes a team. And Brooklyn has no draft picks. They traded it all away to try to win a championship. I don't know how they thought they were going to win a championship with an old Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett, but anyway. That's what they tried, and obviously they failed. Failed mightily. And do y'all know, I don't know how many people noticed, but the Brooklyn Nets had a draft, a first round draft pick, and they had, they wanted to win now. They were still in this win now mode. So the owner pushed through this trade where they traded a first round draft pick, future first round draft pick, to the Portland Trailblazers for a guy by the name of Gerald Wallace. Now, Gerald Wallace is a solid player. He's a solid piece. He's a good, solid six, not even, no, six. He's a good eighth man on a winning team. Gerald Wallace is the eighth man on a winning team that can win a playoff series. Seventh or eighth man. Brooklyn traded a first round draft pick to the Portland Trailblazers for Gerald Wallace. No big deal, right? You know who that first round draft pick became for the Portland Trailblazers? Look at Portland's roster. Do you know what player that pick became? That pick became Damian Lillard. So Brooklyn traded Damian Lillard for Gerald Wallace because they needed to win now. And when did they win? When did, when did the winning actually happen? Okay, so anyway, let's get back to Brooke Lopez. Brooke Lopez is seven feet tall. 
in his career, his rebounding average has been. He started his first year, he averaged eight rebounds. His second year in the league, he averaged 8.6 rebounds. That was his all-time high. Mind you, this is a guy playing 37 minutes per game, and he's seven feet tall. He averaged 8.6 rebounds per game. That was the best he ever did in his whole career. And he's been in the league for eight years. The next year, the very next year, playing the same amount of minutes, he averaged six rebounds per game. He went from averaging 8.6 to averaging six rebounds per game. Uh, Jason Kidd grabs more rebounds than Brooke Lopez. The next year, he got injured. I believe, uh, this is the year he got injured, so we won't count those stats. Came back from his injury, he averaged 6.9, 6.0, 7.4, and 7.8. So last year was actually his third best rebounding year of his entire career. And Brooke Lopez, again, is seven feet tall, and he is the highest paid player on this team, and he is also the best player on this team. They're going to be successful. He's the guy. But how you have a seven-foot guy who plays around a basket who averages seven point eight rebounds per game this is these are atrocious numbers LeBron James grabs more rebounds than Brooke Lopez Brooke Lopez doesn't grab many rebounds I don't think Brooke Lopez is a leader for a winning team actually we know that he's not a leader for a winning team in other words I mean long story short Brooklyn Nets fans if you don't want to watch the rest of this uh, preview of your team y'all in trouble and you're in trouble for a very long time on top of being in trouble you're in trouble for a long time so it's, well, it's one thing to be in trouble temporarily I'm going to be in trouble for a while. Let's see who else is on the team. Grievous Vasquez. Luis Skull is 36 years old. Luis Skull is a solid veteran. He's a good locker room guy, a good team guy. I actually seen Luis Skull when I was in Vegas this summer. One time I was in Vegas this summer. But Luis Skull is not moving the needle between making the playoffs and missing it. No, he, he's absolutely not. Thomas Robinson, another guy who was a high draft pick. Kansas fans. Is Thomas Robinson a bust or is, he, is, the, is the jury still out? He's only 25. Is the jury out on him or not? Y'all let me know. Who else on this roster do I want to talk about? Not many people. Randy Foy. Randy Foy is a piece. Randy Foy is a ninth or 10th guy on a winning team. A successful team is going somewhere. Randy Foy is your ninth or 10th guy. He's one of those guys that might not get in the game in the playoffs if you go into the championship. That's, that's who he is. Randy Foy is going to play a significant role on this team, I feel, which means y'all not going to the playoffs. Brooklyn. Who's the coach? Kenny Atkinson. All right, he's a new coach, right? I believe he's a new coach to the Brooklyn Nets. I think that's the one bright side y'all got. Here's the second bright side. Y'all in Brooklyn. Jay-Z is from Brooklyn. Um, Biggie Smalls is from Brooklyn. Old Dirty Bastard made a song called Brooklyn Zoo. Um, there's a zoo in Brooklyn. What else can we say about Brooklyn? Spike Lee is from Brooklyn. Michael Jordan was born in Brooklyn. I'm just trying to think of positive things to say about Brooklyn because it's not the basketball team. I'm sorry. Any y'all let me know. I'm not gonna try. I'm a crowdsource this one. Somebody tell me some positive reasons, some reasons a Brooklyn Nets fan should feel good coming into this season. Cause I'm lost. I don't have any. If you got some? Let me know. I need them. Leave them in the comments. Everybody, we'll be back next time with the next, the next team we're gonna talk about. I think Brooklyn Nets might be the most depressing team out of everybody. Honestly, this might be the most depressing team out of all the previews. There's some couple teams that I'm, I'm really looking forward to actually talking about because I know they got some, they got some pieces. Let me tell you who that's going to be. I just lost my place here. But anyway, while I'm while I'm finding this team, y'all tell me who is uh, <laughs> who who should we be excited about when it comes to the Brooklyn Nets? Is there anybody? Is there any, is there anything? All right, so the Brooklyn Nets won 21 games last year, but I don't know how. The next team we're going to talk about is the Phoenix Suns. I'm actually looking forward to talking about the Phoenix Suns. I should just record that video right now, back to back. I'm going to stop this one. Y'all see the Phoenix Suns one tomorrow. Everybody, Brooklyn Nets fans, I would say I'm sorry, but y'all brought this on yourselves. I know not you personally, but <laughs> you know the deal. You heard what I said. If you know something that I don't know, to be happy about this team, let me know. I'm, I'm all ears. I'm listening. Work on your game. See y'all tomorrow, Phoenix Suns.